Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program, though as you can see today, my fearless leader, the County Board Chairman Roger Distruti, is not with me, so I'm going to try to muddle through this without him. And today we're very, very pleased to have one of our 19 department heads and really an outstanding employee working for Sheboygan County in this community, Rebecca Persick, our Court Commissioner. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. I know that we've had Rebecca and, of course, many of our department heads on the program from time to time. And, of, and our, our charge, our goal, is to share with you a little bit more of insight about their role, responsibilities, and the very important work that they do. And, Rebecca, I think you've been with the county. Has it been close to 15 years now? It's been over 15 years. It's been over 15 yep, years. Yeah, 16 years with the county. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. we started about the same time. Well, let's start a little bit. Uh, about just yourself. Why don't you set the stage and, and tell our viewers a little bit about your background? Uh, well, I grew up here in Wisconsin in rural Manitowoc County and um, I've been an attorney for the past 20 years and for the past 11 years I've worked as the Circuit Court Commissioner. I'm married to my husband Jay for 21 years and we have two children. Now Circuit Court Commissioner, what's the difference between a, a Circuit Court Commissioner, a, a Municipal Judge, a Circuit Court Judge, how do you distinguish between those? Well, circuit court commissioner and circuit court judges are all part of the circuit court system. A municipal judge handles ordinances and non-criminal citations. They enforce um, the ordinances from the municipality that they work for. So they're very um, low-level types of cases, traffic offenses, uh, that sort of thing. Um, the circuit court system handles all sorts of cases, criminal cases, family cases, mental health cases, uh, delinquency cases, children in need of protection and services. And my job differs from that of a circuit court judge in a couple respects. I'm appointed by the judges in the county uh, at the circuit court level to preside over certain types of cases. So I do a lot of initial court appearances and all the same types of cases that the circuit court judges hear. I do final hearings in certain divorces and injunction type cases, domestic abuse injunctions and harassment injunctions. Um, and I'm appointed, as I said before, I'm not elected to the circuit court. I'm appointed by the judges. So a circuit court judge is an elected position. Is that a four-year term? It's a six-year term. It's a six-year term. Mm -hmm. And they're really considered state employees, are correct, they not? Correct, correct. And then you're appointed by, and we have five circuit court judges here, you're mm -hmm. appointed by them, and you are considered a county employee? Correct. What are the qualifications to be a, a circuit court judge or a court commissioner that's appointed by the judges? Well, a court commissioner, uh, the qualifications are defined by law, and you have to have a law degree and have at least three years of legal experience to be considered for the position of court commissioner. And what about a municipal judge, as you said earlier? They don't handle the same types of cases. Mm -hmm. Do they have similar qualifications or not? No, as a matter of fact, state law doesn't require a municipal judge to even have a law degree. Um, in our county, I think that the uh, Sheboygan City and Kohler Municipal Court has elected to hire someone who has a law degree. The Plymouth Municipal Court also has someone with a law degree. I think Sheboygan Falls does not. So state law doesn't require it. Uh, so there are some differences there. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. So what's the primary role and responsibility of the, the court commissioner's department? Well, to put it simply, it's to help with the administration of the court system. And you touched on that a little bit, but give me a little better flavor for that. What's all involved? What, what's a typical day like in your office? Well, it really depends on the day. Every day of the week I do criminal intake. So people who've been arrested generally within the last 48 hours, if they're still in custody, uh, I see them to go over with them their criminal complaint, what the charges are, what the possible penalties are. I take their plea, I set bond in their case. Um, I'm on call 24 hours a day to authorize search warrants and criminal investigations. Um, and then every other day of the week, my duties are divided up between the other types of cases I handle. So I'll do uh, you know, a couple divorces, I'll do what's called a temporary order hearing in a divorce because there's a 120 day wait from the time you file for divorce till the earliest date you can get divorced. And in high conflict cases especially, um, people will come in to me and ask for a temporary order where I 
have to make decisions about the custody and placement of the children and who gets to stay in the home and how the finances are going to be divided on a temporary basis until that final divorce can be held. Um, on Wednesday afternoons I do traffic intake uh, and so those are the kind of like the municipal citations. Um, citations written by State Patrol and Sheriff's Department that are non-criminal. I do those every Wednesday afternoon. Um, every morning at 8 o'clock if there are any mental health commitment hearings I do mm -hmm. those at Aurora Hospital. Um, on Tuesday afternoons I do juvenile pleas and juvenile intake and children in need of protection and services. Um, so it really, it really depends on the day. There is no typical day. There the, is no typical day, no. The breadth of, of the cases you're dealing with and really impacting people's lives and child custody. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you've had some pretty high profile cases that you've uh, been involved with as well. I just, I give you so much credit. It's got to be a challenging work. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, especially cases that impact children. I mean, that's something that I I'm very aware of. It's something I take very seriously and it does weigh on me because I don't want to do anything to hurt a child or hurt a family, but um, it's, an, it's an important part of my job and I, I do my very best in those so, types of cases. And reeling it back just a little bit, you started 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Prior to working as court commissioner, you worked in our child support department, did you not? Yep, I was the assistant corporation counsel. So I did, I prosecuted the mental commitments for the county and I also did the child support enforcement. So again, a tremendous breadth of experience. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your staffing with all this work going on. You must mm -hmm. have a huge staff. <laughs> I have one assistant court commissioner and she handles almost all the small claims cases in the county. Uh, and they're substantial so that's most of her job she also fills in for me if I'm not available for some reason uh, and she does some research work for our circuit court judges uh, on an as-needed basis um, and then we have two part-time paralegal aides who cover our front office they do all our scheduling um, they prepare all our correspondence um, and they do a, a great job running the office. They handle all the questions that come in by phone or people walking in. It's a, it's a very busy office, as you might imagine. I have walked by before, and I've seen a number of people waiting or coming and going, and I know you uh, have a bailiff there from time to time. And set the stage a little bit with, you're appointed by the judges, you're doing very similar, if not the same types of work that they do, What's that relationship then? How does it fit in with the circuit courts? You mean as far as what I do, my relationship with the judges? Yes. Well, a lot of what I do, I think, is the initial stages of the case, as I said earlier. Um, and so uh, in, a high, in, a, in a case that's, um, for, for example, in a family case, if it's a high conflict case and I know the family is going to need a guardian ad litem, I'll consult with the circuit court judge generally on appointing a guardian ad litem that, that the judge and I both feel would be appropriate given the, the circumstances in the family's case. Um, so I, I do work closely with the circuit court judges. Um, what would be an example of a difference? What's the difference between your role versus a circuit court judge? I think the, probably the primary difference is that I handle more of the initial aspects of the case and then the case gets passed on to the circuit court judge. Because it, from my point of view as county administrator when I see the work that you do and the heavy caseload and the mm -hmm. diversity of cases that you're doing in our, in our circuit court judges, it seems very similar, you know, from an outsider looking in. Right, it is similar, and I don't want to be disrespectful to the circuit court judges by right. saying what I do is the same, but it's similar in, in that many of the cases that I see initially, you know, end up in right. front of the judges eventually. So a lot of times we're both involved in the exact same cases. So, for example, and what, what would be an example that our viewers could appreciate where someone would go to see you versus see a circuit court judge? What would be an example of a difference? Um, for a temporary order hearing, as I mentioned earlier, so I do a lot of those in high conflict divorce cases, uh, they would see me. If, they, if their case is still contested at the time of the final divorce hearing and they need a trial, that would be done in front of the circuit court judge. If it's not, if they have an agreement by the time of their final hearing, then I would do the divorce as well. Okay, very good. Nice overview. Yeah. So about how many cases do you handle a year? 
again, that really depends on the type of case. So the ordinances, for example, Wednesday afternoons, I, I mentioned earlier that I do traffic and ordinance intake. That only takes me about a half an hour a week, but they're generally you know, 5,000 or more cases that come through on, a year, on, an, annual on an annual basis. But because they're very simple types of cases, they, they process very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, criminal cases, the criminal intake I do, again, there are you know, thousands of misdemeanors and, and felonies combined every year that come through. Um, as far as family cases, you know, those take a lot longer. If, if I have a contested custody hearing, I usually take an hour and a half to do those, which may not even be long enough when the stakes are so high, when there are children involved. But that's about as much time as I can spend on, on a contested custody hearing. So those hearings take much longer. Um, and I'll probably do about a, you know, roughly about 175 of those a year or so. Wow. Yeah. So a lot, of, a lot of diversity, a lot mm -hmm. of different types of cases, some more complicated than others. Which ones do you find most rewarding? I think the family cases are the ones that are most rewarding um, because people are coming in in, well, in fact, most of the people I see are people who are in crisis in, in one way or another, but particularly the family cases, um, the people are coming in and and their world is really upside down. And in the temporary order hearing, I know I keep mentioning that, but that's probably the most impactful part of my job and, and therefore the most rewarding because it's very early in the process and people's lives are really tipped upside down and I'm able to give them a court order, a framework when they walk out of court to say, okay, here's, here's how it's gonna look going forward. So even if uh, things aren't happy for them, at least they have a, a path to move forward in. Earlier you mentioned that you also marry people and I that's true. I get a kick out of it from time to time when we've got the cars all decorated mm -hmm. out in front of the courthouse mm -hmm. there or you see people come and go and are do you marry most of the people actually in the courthouse itself or how does that work? Yeah almost all the marriages I perform are right in the courthouse and we reserve Friday afternoons for those weddings and that's a great way to end the week, a yeah. happy way to end a the week. A happy way to end the week. Yeah. Very nice. And and approximately how many, you say every Friday, is that every do you Friday. have every Friday you have folks looking to get married? Every Friday. So I think on average we do about 130 weddings a year in the court commissioner's office. Very good. When you when you think about your time as as court commissioner and how long has it been exactly? Uh, 11 years, a 11. little over 11 years. So 11 to 16 years in mm -hmm. that office. Uh, what have been some of the trends or organizational changes, you know, what are some of the differences you've noted from 11 years ago to today? Oh gosh, that's a tough question. I mean, obviously, um, as a department head, in addition to my courtroom responsibilities, I have to prepare a budget. And that's been tough the last um, five, six, seven years, as you know, as county administrator. And I have to really commend you and the county board because you've made the budget, the budget process much easier for us as department heads. You've set goals for us, you've been firm with us, but you've also assisted us in, in meeting our budget targets. Um, and that's probably one of the most challenging parts actually, uh, is, is being able to operate within those budget targets. And I appreciate the feedback. As yeah. you know, we've got a good team with the county board and department yeah. heads, and, and department heads such as yourself need to be willing to be creative and think of means of gaining efficiencies to work within those rigid caps that mm -hmm. we have in place, whether they're self-imposed goals or goals from the state that we're required right. to implement. You've done some creative things to keep your costs in check. Mm -hmm. Please touch on that. Well, I mentioned that I have two uh, part-time paralegal aides and that was done as a cost-saving me measure. I used to have one full-time person in that position and when she retired, we converted it to two part-time positions and that has saved a lot of money on, on benefits. Mm -hmm. And the, the folks that are working for you right now, my sense is you've really got some good staff. I do, they're outstanding and I couldn't do it without them, that's for sure. Yeah. So 11 years in the job and um, certainly you've seen some uh, challenges with the budget process. Mm -hmm. Any other trends? Have you noticed that there's been more types of certain types of cases or or crime, or mm -hmm. are the divorce cases getting more complicated? And any anything else that comes to mind? 
Well, I think one of the trends that's, that's definitely been noticeable in the last 11 years is that when I started, there was still, I think, an expectation or a preference that when a couple was getting divorced, um, the wife would end up with primary placement of the children. And that's definitely changed as time has gone on. Um, I think it's much more common now for me to see shared placement situations or to order shared placement situations. Um, so that's one trend that's definitely, uh, I've noticed a definite change in. One thing that I noticed when I first started, which hasn't changed, is the number of domestic violence cases we see. I, uh, was surprised doing criminal intake every day that every day we have people charged with domestic violence cases. Every day, I can't think of a day ever where we haven't had at least one case and usually more than one. And in a smaller community like this, that was a, a surprise to me, but it's something that's certainly prevalent. And just in the last few years alone, um, the amount of violent crime in Sheboygan has really increased. Yeah. And heroin use, of course, is... Heroin use, right. When I started, it was mostly <clears throat> crack or cocaine, and then we had a meth epidemic for a short time, and um, heroin kind of came about as a uh, convergence of two things. I think when the economy uh, got worse, um, small amounts of heroin are, are pretty affordable on the street. The problem is it's very addictive, and very quickly it it balloons up into a very expensive habit, uh, and prescri prescri prescription painkiller use was a lot more widespread and not as tightly regulated, and once it became regulated, people who'd been addicted to painkillers turned to heroin. heroin. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's a huge problem, not just here, but, but everywhere in the country. And it's, very, uh, it's a very addictive drug. Of, of the drugs uh, that are available on the street, I think it's definitely the most dangerous. I'm not sure people are aware of how many overdose deaths we've had in Sheboygan County or near deaths. Um, it's, a, it's a big problem. Yeah, it is a big problem. And I'm glad our, our Sheriff's Department and the City Police Department, I know they've been stepping up to try to be more vigilant and raising awareness to it. It, yeah. it shakes your world up when you hear about just how bad it is, how addictive it is, and how it just ruins lives. Right, right, and I think law enforcement's been doing a tremendous job battling the, the problem. Every year is part of the annual budget development process. Of course, I meet with all the department heads, including you, to go over the proposed budget, and, and we talk about the programs and services, mm -hmm. and, and one of the uh, programs you've talked about in the past is Remember the Children. Mm -hmm. And I know this is an area, you, you talked earlier, and I can see the passion from you mm -hmm. about how much you care about families and children. What is the Remember the Children program? Well, state law allows counties to require any parent going through a separation, whether it's in a, a, a marriage situation where people are getting divorced or a paternity case or where the parents have never been married, um, to require parents getting a separation to, to take a class about the effects of the separation on the family. And that's really the only under the statute, that's really the only thing that's required is to educate parents about the effect. Uh, in Sheboygan County, um, the class, Remember the Children, is the class that, that we do, and that was started by former Commissioner Burke, who's now Circuit Court Judge Burke. Mm -hmm. And um, he developed the class with the help of Dr. Susan Hine and Patty Brinkman, who both have a counseling background. And they relied on their counseling background to come up with a class that not only talks about the effects of divorce on children, but how to minimize those effects, how to communicate effectively with each other, even though uh, you're, you're separating. I think people tend not to realize you're gonna continue to parent together for the rest of your lives. Right. And you need tools to be able to communicate effectively. And they're also trained in child development and the types of schedules that might be appropriate for a child given their age and development. And they provide education about that as well. And they really give people the tools they need to, mm -hmm. to survive a divorce and, and to thrive after divorce. So as part of the, the process of going through the divorce, is it a requirement that each spouse takes this program? Then? It is, yes. It is. Yeah. And, and how extensive is it? The program? Yeah. It's a single three-hour class. They cover a lot okay. in three hours. Okay. And you say there's counselors there that help teach and go through this, and mm -hmm. I, I imagine are there to provide suggestions and support. 
Right, they do. And in fact, the two people who are responsible for developing the class have continued to teach it. They are very committed to it themselves. Um, and so they have taught it ever since it was developed 20 years ago. That's fantastic. My, my parents were divorced when I was in high school and I'm the oldest mm -hmm. of three siblings. So I, I think to my brother and my sister who's nine years younger and I think any any of us who have been in a family where our parents have been divorced or we know folks that are divorced, it, it just really changes dynamics. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, my parents were able to maintain a cordial relationship mm -hmm. and I'd almost say they're friends today. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see that very often, mm -hmm. but every Christmas, every holiday, you know, it, it just changes dynamics. And I think when you're in the battle of going through a divorce, it's probably easy not to be thinking about how profound of an impact that's going to have on your children, especially right. young children. Right. I, I was closer to high school age, but I, I think about my brother and sister to this day. Mm -hmm. And and of course, as I said, every holiday is different. So I, I appreciate that that's a, a program and, and something that we offer to try to support people. Yeah. Every little bit helps. Yep. Well, as you reflect on this, and we only have a few minutes remaining, but as you reflect on your, your uh, tenure as court commissioner and all of the cases you've been a part of and all the people you've helped. Um, to me, it takes a unique person to have not only the skills that you mentioned earlier that are, that are helpful, but mm -hmm. just the demeanor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if everyone is suited to uh, deal with those types of challenges day in and day out. You're Talk embarrassing about, me. I grew up in the Midwest. <laughs> All this praise is too much. <laughs> well, well, tell me about that a little bit. I mean, you, you, have to, you have to keep your emotions in check. It's true. You have to listen to all mm -hmm. sides. I, how do you do that? I, I mean, what, what are some of the characteristics of a good judge? How do you do it? Um, well, I'll, I'll back up and tell you something. My, my son got in a little trouble earlier in the week because he forgot to turn in a, a homework assignment. And he was very upset with himself about it. And then he said, why don't you yell at me? All of my friends' parents yell at me. Why are you so nice to me? <laughs> and you know, I reflected on that because I, I was not raised with a family who wouldn't have yelled at me. I, I got yelled at. Uh, and I realized that that's, that's my job. And it carries over to my, my home life in that respect because um, you know, I think everybody's human. Everybody makes mistakes. Certainly families in crisis, families going through divorce, they don't need someone to yell at them. They need someone to listen to them and, and to help them through their crisis. And so I think that, um, that anyone in that sort of position does need to be patient. They do need to listen to what people are saying. Um, and, and those are probably two of the most important qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. And what about you personally? What's your personal passion for this type of work? What is it about this line of work that uh, interests you so and that you want to continue it? I like to try and help people. I, you know, I, I hope that I do. Um, it's, it's, you know, I'm in a unique position because I try to foster agreement wherever I can, but where there is an agreement, I have to make a decision. And that means sometimes people walk out of the courtroom as winners and sometimes they walk out as losers. Um, one of the most rewarding things for me is people who've stopped me after the fact, people who've recognized me as I'm shopping in the grocery store or something like that and, and say to me, look, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't agree with your decision when you made it, but but afterwards it worked out for the best. And, and I, you know, that's certainly what I, I try to do for people. Very good. So as you think big picture about the, the court system as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you look to the future, what do you think are some of the, the greatest challenges we face as a community and as a state with our court system? Well, certainly one of the greatest challenges has always been figuring out how to stem the tide of, of um, reoffending behavior in criminal cases and uh, broken homes and family cases. So there tends to be a lot of, you know, if you grow up in a home where there's a lot of crime or a lot of violence, certainly not everybody, but a lot of those kids become offenders themselves. And there's always questions about the best way to handle that and stop that because certainly, you know, the goal should be prevention rather than punishment after the fact. 
and uh, as the court system, from the court system's perspective, oftentimes we're coming in at the end of a case and we're dealing with, in, a, in the criminal scenario anyway, more with punishment. Um, that's changing a little bit. Uh, you know, there, for example, Judge Sakavich was responsible for developing our veterans court, right. uh, which is right. a diversion court that right. we're using for people who are veterans who are um, accused of crimes to try and keep them out of the criminal system um, and, and rehabilitate them and work with families for a positive result for everybody. Right. And um, Judge Burke is actually working now on the development of a, a drug and alcohol court, similar situation. So people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol, trying to get involved in treating that addiction to prevent future problems because there's all sorts of crime that arises out of addiction, either because people aren't in their right mind when they're um, high on drugs or alcohol, or because to support their habit, they're committing crimes like burglaries and robberies and thefts. Yeah, yeah. Always room for improvement. If anyone has a question or heard something that they'd like to have more information on or want to learn more about the roles and responsibilities of your office, who do they contact? How do, how do people get more information? Well, the county has a website, so there's some information on SheboyganCounty.com. The website, each department has a link uh, that has information about that department and contact information as well. And then you have an assistant that works for you that I imagine fields calls and assists as well, and that's on the website for contact information. Yes. Yeah, yes. very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope that in the last 30 minutes or so, you got a snapshot and appreciation what I've been so fortunate to work with for the last 16 years. Mm -hmm. I started in January of 1999. When did you start? <laughs> July of 98. July of 98. She's just beat me a little bit. But <laughs> I, I've had the pleasure of working with Rebecca for over 15, nearly 16 years now, and she is what you see, very professional, very thoughtful and very effective and we've been so fortunate to have you be one of our department heads as well as court commissioner for the last 11 years. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Next month we're going to have another person who is a department head and in a very important role when it comes to law enforcement and holding people accountable and problem solving and that's our sheriff, Sheriff Todd Preeby. Uh, Todd has been our sheriff now for one full term and just was re-elected I think without any competition. I find him to be a breath of fresh air. He's very positive, outgoing, making good things happen, not only in his department, but in the community. And we'll be able to learn more about the roles and responsibilities of the Sheriff's Department. So until then, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Christmas and New Year, and we'll see you in a month or so.